So I've been working on a video, it turns out, for three weeks now. Um, this is week number three on it. And I'm still not finished. I still have to do all the B-roll, uh, which is considerable. So that'll probably be at least another week, too. And that's going to be animation, motion graphics, what have you, like something probably slightly more sophisticated than uh, PowerPoint-esque word art or whatever, which is fine. I mean, I can, I can do that. I mean, nothing is quick about that though. That's just the thing. And when you, you can sort of treat these individual bits like a, their own little projects. And it makes sense why people um, can split the work up amongst a bunch of people and why some of these big YouTube accounts have entire teams and they spend an entire month on a video and uh even having that be like the first order you know actual thing that i do i mean i just do this stuff on the side and it just so happens that i can i can do it but uh if this was my actual job i could imagine being slightly more resourced and otherwise efficient about it but I'm gonna have like B minus efficiency at best. And I just have to live with that. But yeah, I mean, it takes a month apparently to make a 10 minute video. Um, Cause that's what it is. It's 10, well, pff, 10 and a half minutes. I tried to get it under 10 minutes, but um, yeah, wow. No, it took me like a week to do the script and then another week to you know, sort of go back and forth around it. Then I showed it to my girlfriend who is a normal human being. And she's like, I don't get what this is about. And it turned out it needed a little bit of loving just to get it over the line. And so I went back and did that. And so that brought me to, well, it brought me to last Friday. Uh, then I lost the goddamn file of all things. Um, it got zeroed out in a network uh, failure, which I can talk about some other time and likely will write about it. So it uh, took me all last weekend to like rewrite the damn thing. I managed to save a bunch of it, but everything I had written that day, last Friday, is gone. And so, you know, I had to come up with basically all the new script all over again. So that was a thing I did not expect. That took four days. Um, so, you know, yeah, this week. So I, you know, managed to get that in the can yesterday. And I mean, if I have to do another take, that's not a big deal. But I mean, mainly the issue is trying to get the content to concisely transmit. I mean, it's really what the entire thing was about was sort of how... Um, there's really not a lot of space for, for content. And I remember doing a radio ad a while back and, uh, we only had budget for a 30 second spot, which, you know, actually if you don't have 60 seconds, cause it was a political ad. So you don't have, if you don't have 60 seconds for radio, like you can't, everybody else is paying for 60 seconds. So just, just that on the, on the, on, off the top there, but turns out that 30 seconds is about three sentences. So you have to like design, and we went back and forth for days on just what those three sentences said. So that is a serious constraint. And so, yeah, um, uh, what I've found just even doing YouTube videos is like half of these things you know, drop off half of the viewers drop off after the first like minute and a half anyway. And so, you know, that's nine sentences, two minutes, 12 sentences. Um, I mean, give or take, right. Cause obviously the, it's a little bit fuzzy, but, um, and I mean, whatever, that's, that's just the nature of the business, but, um, bizarre constraints really. So like a lot of the writing was just trying to figure that out. I have definitely, I mean, I would have preferred to, to do it in five minutes, but 
What I have found just even just doing these warm up videos is that you can talk about like one thing. You can treat one topic in five minutes. And if you have two topics, which this other video does, it's 10 minutes. And so if I were to talk about another thing now, which I kind of do, this is gonna be another five minutes. And we're currently at five minutes and change right now, which I might cut chunks out of. Yeah, so there was something else. Um, yesterday I was watching, um, so there's, I don't know what this guy's story is, this German guy, Tante, did a talk uh, at a thing called, uh, a gathering called Republica, which is apparently in Berlin. I've heard of it before. The thing about all these conferences is, like, you don't know which ones are cool, and you don't know which ones are just, like, a vanity thing, and you don't know which ones are, you know, like... I wouldn't mind going to more conferences in general. It's just I don't have, like, any um, budget, but also don't have any um, real sense of which ones are really worth going to. Um, my rule about conferences is I don't go to them if I'm not speaking at them anyway, but I might relax those rules if they were something that was actually genuinely, you know, worth attending just as an attendee but like it costs like i mean going to berlin and like staying in a hotel for four days or whatever is you know that's a three thousand dollar proposition on its own and uh just uh you know you you kind of have to pick which ones you do um do that uh, for so i don't know um but the content of the talk was the thing that i was uh, I wanted to highlight because um, he was talking about something that is you know near and dear to my heart, which is how language around innovation is treated like it treats it like a first order objective rather than an epiphenomenon. Like you innovate to solve problems. And if it's not, doesn't solve a problem, it's not, not an innovation. And so the problem is the thing that comes first. And if what you do is innovate to solve it, I mean, you can solve it not by innovating. You don't need to innovate to solve a problem necessarily, but you might. Then at that point, you can sort of judge a thing as an innovation. So it's, it, you know, he sort of attacked that, which I, I was the thing that got my attention initially, but later on he started talking about, you know, coming up with a list of demands, like political demands. And I, I had to think about that a bit because to me a demand is something that you are extracting, I'm trying to use that without saying the word demand, but something that you're trying to excise from other people and you have, you're in a position to threaten something that they care about so, you know, demands are implicitly like you do this or else uh, kind of a, uh, of a uh, structure. And so, you know, I think this like my, my thinking was like I was I was interested in the exercise, though my tendency and this is probably just my own pathology is sort of hair split between you know, what is an actual genuine demand it, it fits all those criteria and what are things like principles and stipulations and, and so on. Like, as you can say, stipulations like, you know, I won't work with people who, you know, I won't work for, I don't know, fossil fuels or I won't work for mining or I won't work for, you know, shady whatever, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that would be a example of a stipulation. And that's fine. But the, uh, I thought it was an interesting, interesting exercise that I'm going to think about more um, because what he said was that sort of stuck in my head was you have to sort of start telling stories about the kind of world that you want uh, and that's the thing that gets people interested in what you're doing, which, yeah, absolutely. Anyway.